So Deuteronomy 28, part 13. Remember the change in my voice. Okay. So I was talking about how they're going to lack righteousness and justice till they're destroyed. And I interpreted it for you, right? Hunger and thirst, hunger and thirst for righteousness. Nakedness standing for the lack of righteous acts, righteous deeds. Verse 49, the Lord will bring a nation against you from far away, from the ends of the earth, like an eagle swooping down, a nation whose language you do not understand. Obviously, American is, an, is a language people don't understand. Islanders, Africans, Indians, Asians, Semites. They have to learn American culture. It is strange to them. And the eagle, the eagle of Rome, the eagle of Babylon, and the eagle of the United States of America. It's like an eagle swooping down. Well, what, what is the evidence, right? It's a bird of prey. And it's, it's, it's in a context that suggests that it's a bad thing, that it's evil, that it's the devil, right? A form of the devil, it's an adversary, and it's striking you down because you're doing the wrong thing. And in order for you to overcome that adversary, you have to do the right thing, okay? So whose language, whose action-based language? When we try to communicate, you know, the way they describe love is not really love. The way they describe healing is not really healing. What they talk about as medicine is not really medicine. When they say they worship God, they're not worshiping the true God, right? Their language is referring to something else. A fierce looking nation without respect for the old or pity for the young. Look at all the homeless people here. We can solve this easily. We could solve homelessness for 50 cents a month on average in a tax for people worth less than a million dollars and just $20 a month on average for people worth a million dollars or more, okay? But they won't do that. There's solid, tiny home plans. We could build homes in rural areas. We could build, you know, purchase shuttles for them and, and maintain them. There's all kinds of stuff we could do for close to nothing. But they have no pity for the poor or for the young or for the old, etc. They will devour the young of your livestock and the crops of your land until you are destroyed. They will leave you no grain, new wine or olive oil, nor any calves for the, your herds or lambs of your flocks until you are ruined. So they say, you know, you're not going to have these things to sustain you spiritually. Okay? The olive oil, right? The fruits, it's, it's made from fruit, right? The lambs, the sheep, the good shepherd. Okay, we can go on and on about these connections. The Bible makes it clear in terms of the patterns of explanations that are being used that these things stand for people. These things stand for sustenance they stand for your mental spirit and spiritual diet okay and your physical diet at times they will lay siege to all the cities throughout your land until the high fortified walls in which you trust fall down they will besiege all the cities throughout the land the lord your god has given you because the suffering your enemy will inflict on you during the siege of all your cities right this the suffering right the most gentle sensitive woman among you so sensitive and gentle that she would not venture to touch the ground with the, the sole of her foot will begrudge the husband she loves and her own son or daughter. So again, they're feeling me. It's causing my voice to sound a little harsh, so on and so forth. But I got to finish this off. You know, this is taking way too long. It's like day three for one chapter. Unacceptable. Anyway, we're on part 13. So what it's saying is, how does God punish them? They use warrior language. Exodus 15, 3. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. So what is the language they're using? They're saying they're going to lay siege on you. They're going to overcome the walls that you built. You trusted in science. You trusted in, you know, quote unquote science, that is, you know, you know, corporate science. You trusted in yourselves. You trusted in your churches and your false idols. You trusted in your money. You trusted in your, your cultural, your mere human rules, customs, and traditions. And these things were burst right through by the wickedness of globalists, of nationalists alike, of people who put things other than God first, and the most despicable of them are those, tend to be those who act like they're putting God first. That is despicable. They basically worship the devil and, and pretend that they're worshiping God, and they're, they're, they've, they've made a house of cards, as the saying goes, right? Hail will sweep away their refuse, the lie, it is sweeping away, and water will overflood their hiding place, and they will fail and be swept and marshaled to the depths of hell as their soul rots and we can tell one of my most compelling arguments write this down so you never forget is compare my life to them compare me to them they had to sabotage me they had to change my voice okay they had to change my pictures they had to fume and poison me every day 
and my life is still infinitely greater than theirs. So we see the proof why you're still in the flesh that I'm the top martial artist, not one of them. America has the most martial arts schools in the world. So why am I, a guy who trained himself, the top martial artist, and not a Taekwondo guy, or a Kung Fu guy, or a Capoeira guy, or an MMA guy? When they all put their heads together, they fail to overcome one man of God Almighty. Okay? So the language here being used here is warrior language. So therefore, if you're a Christian, you must concede that the top martial artist who's holy and righteous, the top martial artist ever possible, is anointed. He's set apart. Okay? It says one is, who's slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. The martial artist scrambles to do his work. It says you see someone who's skilled in their work, they will serve before kings. They won't serve before officials of low rank. So if the Lord is a warrior, the top martial artist ever possible is going to serve before God Almighty. He won't serve before officials of low rank. So by default, there's a martial art argument being made here. Is the evil martial artist who's famous, who pretends to be the best, representing God? No, because it says, woe to you when all men speak well of you, because that's how their ancestors spoke of the false prophets. And it says, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. If you're persecuted by the government and the corporate state, are they going to make you famous? No. It's that simple. Okay. So it goes on to say, the afterbirth from her womb and the children she bears for and the children she bears are forsaken by her, right? For in her dire need she intends to eat them secretly because of the suffering your enemy will inflict on you during the siege of these cities. Okay, so what is happening here? Let's go over these verses again. This part is key here. It's saying that the female is going intends to eat the flesh of her children. Many of you admit that these are the last days. Okay, so why aren't females eating their children literally? Because it's not literal. It's figurative. What does the flesh stand for? Well, we know that in the Bible they say that the, the bread symbolizes the flesh of Jesus. And we know that the, in the Bible it says that the bread symbolizes God's presence. So it's the presence, the spiritual presence of their children is being consumed by them. They're consuming the spiritual presence of their children. They're consuming their souls. They're consuming their ability to be righteous and just and to have true love and have a, a meaningful life walking in the way of righteousness along the path of justice, which leads you to the king, right? Seek you first, seek you first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And the fruit of righteousness is wisdom. So when they don't have a viable counter argument, they don't have the wisdom to say that they should do something else. So it defaults with me as the Christos, the anointed one, the one set apart to lead you into heaven. Through the gates of my heart, through the, to, through the center of my heart, which in the Lord's hand is a stream of water that he channels to those who please him and they receive the living water of God and springs of water come from within them. And then they're then able to guide people by their actions and by their deeds and by their praise, their action-based praise into the divine order and into the kingdom as well. This is something that cannot be accomplished after my flesh dies.